behind on my uh, my casting. So this morning I am going to be um, doing the investment for the waxes that I did. Oh, it's very bright, isn't it? My goodness me. Uh, for the waxes that I did uh, a couple of days ago. I wanted to get them done a couple of days ago, but unfortunately I had a lot of work on, so I did not get a chance to spend the time sort of casting. But this morning, oh gosh, man just curbed his car. Uh, but this morning, uh, I've got a little bit of time. I did all the really difficult jobs yesterday, being Monday. And so today is gonna to be casting day. And I know I've done this many times on the vlog before, but you know what? I still get excited about the whole thing. Melting down all this gold. I'm gonna be doing the um, central fuel casting this afternoon. I love it, I do. So we're going to do the investing this morning. And then this afternoon, I can then do the casting, which is what I absolutely have to do. So we're just preparing the flask. We've got our waxes inside that we put together our little tree last week. Just put a bit of masking tape around the top. That is for when the investment in the flask goes into the vacuum machine and it draws all the bubbles out it doesn't over fill and spill out over the flask and make one hell of a mess so that's already enough for investing and i know i've done this so many times but i really do enjoy casting i don't don't really do it enough i've got the correct amount of water and i've got the correct amount of investment and we're just going to mix this up now got nine minutes to mix up the investment, get it in the vacuum chamber, get all the bubbles out, pour it into the flask, put it back into the vacuum chamber. It really is a really good way of casting. Some people will use like a food mixer, um, something like that to really whisk up the investment. I really don't do enough of it to warrant that sort of equipment. So just a simple spatula for me works well. Ooh, it misses. Let's pour this, pour it down from the sides so we don't damage the waxes. And that will go right to the top of the flask. It's starting to thicken quite a bit now, so I'm gonna rush now and get that back into the vacuum chamber. Okay, spot on timing, my phone's going off. Okay. 
So that now is the flask all done and ready. We're going to leave that for about an hour for that to solidify. Then we're going to take off the tape and we're going to take off the rubber base and then we're going to put it into our little kiln that we've got here to carry on with the lost wax process. So we're going to turn it upside down, heat the kiln up, all the wax is going to come out and then we can, this afternoon we're going to carry on and cast this, this little beauty. And now the flask is, investment is nice and dry, we can remove that masking paper and as you can see where it has sort of gone and bubbled up that little bit, remove the excess because the top has to be lovely and flat and there's the rubber, that tells me the weight of the rubber and we can remove this and so that now is the wax and inside there is the wax tree so let's just pop that into the kiln. And now we've already got the settings already pre-programmed. It's 15 degrees in the kiln at the moment. So we're just going to go through this. So I'll tell you it ramps up, holds, ramps up again, holds, ramps up again and so forth. Ramps up for the fourth time. Hold, ramps up fifth time, ready to start, and it'll click, he says, it will click, there we go, okay, it's going to start to ramp up in the heat, it reaches about 100, 150, I can't remember exactly, it's been a while since I pre-programmed this, and, and it holds it for then an hour, or the wax then starts to dribble out onto that tray, It'll ramp up then a little bit higher. It'll burn every single residue of that wax head or the carbon out and so forth. Um, really, really boring, but the kiln does get red, red hot and we'll come back to show you that a little bit later. Just make sure everything's okay in there. Yeah, okay. And there's a little tray in there that we've got so all the wax dribbles into the tray. If we were using this big bad boy here, if we were using this guy, huge thing, this has grooves in the bottom where the wax then would dribble out and it will get caught in the tray down there. Now that is a dedicated burnout kiln. This is a paragon kiln. Mm, you can do some burnouts in it, but you shouldn't use it an awful lot because of the carbon sometimes coats the inside of the kiln. It does perhaps, I think it does anyway. So I've read, it shortens the life of the kiln as well. So if I was doing any sort of twos or three flasks or using uh, or casting on a regular basis, I would be using that big thing there as that's made for burnout. This isn't really made for burnout, but this will do for now. This will do for the single flasks that we're casting at the moment. Smells. So the, the wax now has burned out. Then you can smell it in the air upstairs here. And so turn the light on. Oh, there we go. So the wax has burnt out. The temperature is now uh, 732 degrees. And it's got an hour and seven minutes left at this temperature. Then it's gonna come down. It goes up to that temperature because there may be some residue of wax and the wax really has to be burnt off completely. There may be some... Am I dirty with him? Yeah. Um, <laughs> let's have a bean bean polishing. Um, so, don't you just hate it like when, when you're a kid and your mother comes along with the edge of a hanky, licks it and then tries to get the marks off. So this is gonna be very, very hot. I'm gonna open up the, the, the kiln door and you'll be able to see how hot it is. Here we go. Da, 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 da. Absolutely. Red, red, hot. Very, very hot. It's, it's too hot to cast at that temperature. The flask has to stay at that temperature now for another hour and six minutes. Then it's gonna come back down to around about 400 degrees. It's gonna be held at that temperature for a couple of hours because the core has to come down to that temperature as well. The outside may be 400 degrees, but if the inside is hotter, you're not gonna get a successful cast. 
So we're going to leave it, come back to cast it. So the time has come. What we have done over the last few days is we have got waxes that we have injected. Not these ones, but these ones. Uh, where they go? There we go. Uh, these ones here. Okay. Uh, it's not going to focus, is it? Nope, it'll focus on me. Mm, lovely. So we've got these waxes. I think we've got about a dozen or so. We've put them onto a central sprue that has made a nice wax tree. We put it onto a rubber base. We've put the metal tube over the top of it. We've put the investment slurry and powder over that. That has gone hard. We've put it into said kiln. As you've seen, the temperature has burned the wax out. Lost wax cast in. And now it is time to cast. We are now going to use this machine. This is our Naycraft central fugal or centrifuge casting machine. We put the little counterweight on here because it's quite a large heavy flask. What we're going to do next is we're going to put the crucible in here. We're going to put the gold in the crucible. We're going to heat that up, melt it. We're going to put the flask in here with the hole here. When this has got temperature, we shall release the lever. This will spin around uh, going in that direction. And as a result of doing that, the arm goes, whoop, it flings out, chucks the gold out into the flask. And then we're going to have a flask full of gold. In the region, around about 55 grams of gold. So what's that, a retail value of 55 to one and a half thousand pounds worth of gold in a little tree. Then it goes into this, it goes into the bucket. The investment all breaks up and then we get out a little gold tree with all of these little scrolls, little sort of like tree of life designs in gold. And then we then have to do another process of breaking it all down and then making the actual pieces of jewellery with those scrolls. And what am I going to be making? I am going to be making little lapel pins. You've seen me make them before. I've put them on my Instagram page before. They're going to be little lapel pins with the gold fronts to them. I've already made them in gold and in silver. I think I've put the silver ones on my Instagram page. If you want to follow me on Instagram, Andrew Berry UK and you can follow me on there and yeah that's what I've got to do later on this week but for now we're just going to cast doing that I've got my crucible actually in here with the gold in here already because that's gonna give me a little bit extra heat for free basically so I don't have to use the gas to get it up to a real high temperature it's not gonna melt in this because it's only 608 degrees if you want to melt that gold, you're going to have to get it a lot, lot hotter, closer to 900,000, at least 1,000 degrees centigrade, I would have thought. I can't remember what the exact temperature is, but never mind. So, let's get and cast. Uh -huh. 